Today we're visiting with wildlife veterinarian Dr. Charlie Bonson and we're going to talk about what happens at the Wildlife Health Lab in Bismarck. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. This is our wildlife health lab. Um, it was designed to basically handle anything from a bull moose to uh, you know a bat or something very small. Um, so basically, we can have a you know a bull moose that's found sick or dead out somewhere out in rural North Dakota. Um, you know, it's loaded into the back of the truck. The truck actually backs in here, and then with a rail system, we can lift that moose out of the truck and then either uh, rail it or roll it into a, a walk-in freezer or a walk-in cooler. Um, and then from there, we can actually roll it back over to our necropsy table here uh, to perform a full necropsy and, and collect samples. Um, you know, beyond that, I guess, everything's designed to, uh, you know, we can efficiently and safely uh, necropsy or break down that whole carcass and then spray all surfaces, decontaminate all surfaces. Um, we have a, you know, a radiograph machine as well. So, um, you know, if there's a suspect trauma or poaching situation, we use that a lot to, to help, uh, you know, diagnose what the cause of mortality was. Um, you know, we're also, uh, it's also a really adaptable space, um, so we can kind of reorder everything and, and uh, gear it up for processing large volumes of samples. So, um, you know, in the fall, we'll, we'll probably look at 3,000 heads for chronic wasting disease. Um, you know, in the heat or heart of other situations like uh, avian influenza, we'll have, you know, dozens of birds coming in and out of here every, every day. Um, you know, use it a lot for other research projects as well. It really is a, an outstanding facility, um, you know, and it, it serves an important role for the game and fish. Um, you know, obviously we um, use it to, to look for, uh, you know, diseases or causes of mortality that might be important for, you know, for human health, for wildlife health, for domestic animal health. Um, a lot of times those will have management implications. Um, you know, examples would be uh, pneumonia in bighorn sheep or influenza in birds. Of course, EHD is always a big thing. Um, beyond that, it's also a space that we use to support uh, the department in other capacities. Um, so lots of times, um, you know, a, a potential poaching case, that carcass will end up routing through here and we'll, uh, you know, collect evidence off of it. Um, you know, and also we use this space a lot for other wildlife management research projects, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, pheasant or turkey research projects, uh, duck research projects, um, anything else that, that might come down the pike for, you know, for the department. Um, also, I guess have we done a little bit of fish work through here as well. Year round, we're uh, every week, you know, having samples and, and uh, carcasses come through for, uh, you know, mortality investigations. And again, we're, you know, I guess if you kind of back up and think about, uh, you know, a, a sick or dead animal that shows up somewhere in North Dakota, um, that usually can be, or that often can be a, you know, a potential concern for a lot of reasons. You know, maybe there's a concern that, uh, you know, this deer might have something that poses a risk to, to livestock. Um, maybe it, you know, potentially has something that poses a risk to other wildlife in the area. Um, we actually deal with a lot of potential rabies cases where it's, uh, you know, a neurologic raccoon or skunk or anything else that, you know, potentially poses a risk to, to people in the area. Um, and, but, you know, whatever that primary concern might be to the people on the land, people in that area, um, you know, we bring it here to try to figure out what's going on and then, uh, you know, interpret what the implications might be to that and then importantly relay that back out to the uh, to folks and, and move forward adjusting management if that's necessary or kind of letting live livestock producers know um, but ultimately trying to do the best we can to yeah um, you know overall manage the health of wildlife for for this for our system to work uh, we strongly rely on uh, you know, the eyes and ears of, of people out on the landscape, um, you know, and so when they see sick or dead wildlife, they'll call us or our field staff, often our warden in the area, um, and then we'll, you know, work with field staff to, to kind of figure out what needs to happen. If, if that's, a, you know, a concern that maybe that animal needs to be euthanized, maybe uh, we can let it 
uh, nature on its course. Maybe that animal needs to, that, that carcass needs to be collected and, and be brought here to, to um, you know, do further investigation. But, but yeah, there, there's always the, a member of the public is involved in that kind of that chain of, uh, I guess, the, the chain of communication. So we'll help out a lot um, with potential legal cases. Um, sometimes it's just like a simple, uh, you know, find the bullet. Um, our x-ray machine's really helpful in um, even identifying if an animal's been shot. So even if the bullet passes through the animal, a lot of times it'll leave little specks of metal that we can identify on radiograph. Uh, but we've also been involved in, in kind of even more obscure cases uh, where maybe we're helping the wardens identify like what uh, DNA samples need to be shipped off. Um, we've actually, with uh, law enforcement, we've helped uh, with some cases where we're trying to identify what species hair on a, on a headlight came from. Um, so anything like that, but um, you know, importantly also, we're kind of, we're kind of one, we're the one part of a larger network of you know, expertise and, and lab infrastructure in the country. So uh, we're, we're often collecting samples and shipping them all over the country. Uh, you know, we have relationships with labs in Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, Georgia, um, you know, all that kind of have expertise, and specialized expertise. Um, NDSU is a big uh, collaborator, but, um, but yeah, we'll send samples off to them and, um, and you know, kind of work together to figure out what's, whatever question we're trying to answer. So yeah, um, you know, it's kind of understood that, uh, you know, wildlife health is one component of landscape health, wildlife health, uh, human health, it's all interrelated and tied together. Um, and when you have kind of breakdowns in, in health, uh, that tends to manifest itself in disease or mortality. And so, um, you know, we're kind of at the end of that signal. If, if we have um, sick or dead animals showing up, we're trying to figure out uh, what that means about that overall uh, breakdown in health. And so, uh, you know, we try to help inform our, uh, the department in, um, in figuring out how we can kind of ultimately work towards better resilience and, and long-term health, again, to, to benefit our landscapes, our wildlife, uh, you know, our domestic animals, and, and most importantly, the people in North Dakota. You know, probably 30 states have, uh, you know, a wildlife veterinarian. More states than that have a wildlife health program of some sort. Um, but it is kind of a, a growing branch of wildlife management, um, you know, as you have these kind of things that are more and more recognized as, as important. So, you know, whatever your various diseases are. You know, like when we do research projects where we're bringing animals into the state, we want to make sure that those animals are healthy. So, um, you know, with the sage grouse project a few years ago, or these uh, bighorn sheep, uh, uh, in 2020, uh, we'll, we'll take a number of swabs, we'll also collect blood, and uh, what we're doing with that is we're looking for ex evidence of exposure to different pathogens that might be of concern. Um, you know, essentially it kind of tells us a story of what this animal's encountered in the last couple of years. Um, so we do that, it's very important when we bring animals into the state. Um, we also do that kind of opportunistically when we have live animals in hand for these research projects. So, you know, with those turkeys, we can kind of get a profile of what potential pathogens uh, they've come in contact with, you know, again, over the last couple of years. Of course, sometimes you'll scan that, that blood for a lot of things and you won't find anything, which is also kind of a good story as well. Uh, means that they're really not encountering anything, but, um, but yeah, Blood is, is really valuable for uh, kind of getting a snapshot of what's, you know, what's circulating out on the landscape. I like the diversity, so um, there's kind of new, unique situations that pop up all the time, and, um, and you know, you're never doing one thing for very long before the you know, annual cycle continues to, to shift along.